One of the most significant improvements in the CorelDRAW X6 upgrade is the way in which X6 handles artistic media, especially brushes. This is one of the biggest updates in X6 for us. You know at advancedteachers.com, those of you that follow us, we work with brushes a lot. In fact, we've got over 1,200 brushes for sale on our site. And we use them constantly in our design process, and it's been one of the favorites of our clients throughout the CorelDRAW community working with brushes because we're able to do things with brushes that we can't do with clip art. Clip art is rather static, but with brushes we can form those strokes, make them wider, thinner, and really customize them to our design, giving us the ability to add nice little touches and accents and bumping our design quality up very quickly and easily. And in X6, this has really been a breakthrough for us because we're able to do things we just couldn't do back in X3, X4, and X5. We're going to take a look at that in this video session. The first thing I'm going to take a look at is some of the improvements that we have because of speed and some of the ceilings being lifted. Back in X4, we had to design at this level, and you can see the banding here. We were really limited to maybe 30 steps for our effects here, for the shading and the highlighting that you see in this flame, the blend here. And that was because A, rendering speed, and B, you can only put so many objects underneath a transparency effect in X4. It says you have too many objects selected. And that's our X4 brush. Now we'll come down here and take a look at the X6 brush. We have 150 objects blended in here now. And you can see there is absolutely no banding in this X6 brush. So you could actually print this out at large format and you wouldn't see any banding. Now we like to do things for screen printing, so these are actually two colors. You've got 150 contours to the inside, set up with a transparency of 98% with a red vector object in the background. So we get a nice smooth effect for our brushes. And this gives our brushes depth and a realistic flame look. We get a lot more pop when you compare this against just a flat vector flame object. Now we'll take a look at the difference here because we've taken quite a step from like 30 steps in here to 150. I'm gonna go to my artistic media tool. I'm gonna go down here to custom. And you wanna get your own brushes, you wanna go to custom. I'm going to get this folder here and I'm going to go to all the way down to my brushes and then I'm going to go to flames here and select OK. Now what you'll see here is my two flames. I've got the X4 brush here and the X6 brush here. Let's take a look at the difference in rendering. Go ahead and zoom out here and I'm just going to left click, hold down and create a stroke here. And You can see that that is the X4 brush and it rendered almost instantaneously. Now let's change that brush to the X6 brush and see the difference. 150 steps, in other words, five times as many objects. Took just a second to render, but there it is. Almost instantaneous. So this improved performance really has opened up a lot of doors for us in the ability to make brushes with completely insane effects without dealing with the limitations that we had back in X3, X4, and X5. Now I'm going to come over here and I want to go to Windows and we'll go to Docker and we've already got our artistic media open but if you need to bring that Docker up you can bring it up over here. We'll come over here and click on it and you'll notice that now that we've gone to Flames if we come up here to Custom we don't see our default brushes anymore. I did want to bring this to your attention. If you want to get that back there all you need to do is come down here and go to Default Strokes and you'll have those back. The actual default installed brushes from Corel. Another thing you want to be aware of, you can come over here to your presets and you can turn off presets and you can turn off object sprayers and you only have your brushes. Also, you'll have saved here the place where you were and you can click that and that'll take you back to that right there. Now I want to take a look at how we can take this brush and how we can work with it in X6 because there are some differences between the way X6 renders brushes and the way brushes were rendered back in X3 and in X4. So I'm going to go back to my brush tool. I'm going to scroll down here to where my flames are. I'm going to go back to my flames folder here. There we go. Now I know that this is the X6 brush. So what I'm going to do is just left click, hold down here off the bottom, and just drag a flame stroke that kind of flows with this player right up here to the top, and release that. And we see we got some distortion going on here. What happens, I'm going to go ahead and zoom out here just so we can be familiar with dealing with these issues. We get some distortion in these brushes because of the, which, the way the nodes are laid down. Now, you'd think that the brushes don't work, but that's not the case. You just need to do some cleanup work. I'm going to bring this down here just a little bit more. 
and then I'm going to go with my pick tool and double click on this and I can see I've got a node here I probably don't want that we'll double click that and delete it we can come over here and reshape this just a little bit to arch it over this way probably don't need this node either so I'll go ahead and lasso that and delete it and you can see the shape of our brush is starting to come back together now I could drop a node here say in the middle and then I'll come up here lasso this one and delete it and that'll smooth things out even more and down here at the bottom I've got an extra node I don't need I really don't need this node here I'll delete that and what you're shooting for is you just want to smooth your strokes out by positioning your nodes and working with your control arms the handles on your nodes to smooth everything out you can see that's a nice look there on that flame and what I'll do here is I'm going to do some of the more some of the same over here but I'm gonna go ahead and make some adjustments here just quickly bring this in this way a little bit and arch this up this way here and you can see we've got some damage there because we've got a node down here we don't need either so I'm gonna go ahead and select that and delete that and that'll smooth that right out so now we've got that one going up that way I can go ahead and grab another one here and we'll just take this one here and we'll just kinda come up off the bottom here and follow what's going on with this text and then bring this right up across the top and then once that's rendered I can see that we're off just a bit but I can go ahead and move that down into say right here we'll double click on that take this node up here and stretch that flame right up into there and then kind of arch it this way make it look like it's coming right off of this text here at the top now I can see I've got a node here I'm not going to need that node we'll go ahead and get rid of that and I've got a node here and I think I'll go ahead and let that go also actually that was more than what I wanted I'll hit control Z and I'll zoom in there and see if we've got a lot of damage or just a little we've got a little bit I'm just gonna go double click here and it's really just a matter of working your way through your nodes and just smoothing things out as we saw right there and I can get my wireframe here and just pull this out a little bit right there and now that'll go back in that way and that looks okay right there and then we're coming down into the bottom do we have any disruption here no there's no real disruption here so it we'll, looks like we'll be okay here now what I'll do at this point is I'm just gonna take these two flames and I'm looking at this and I'm thinking to myself well this is coming out the side here like this and I probably want the same thing over here so we'll get my pick tool and I'll double click here on this brush stroke lasso this I'll come up here and click on reverse direction like that and actually that's going upside down I don't want to go upside down so I'll go ahead and set that back I want to flip this which is what happened over here but to do that actually what I can do is I'll go ahead and just duplicate this stroke because I like the way this is kind of flowing out from the bottom into the top so just take this stroke hold down control holding down left mouse key right click one time we'll duplicate that over here we'll hold down control so that when we flip this it's going to be perfectly balanced and there we got some more of the same effect there right click order to back of page that's okay over here right click order to back of page and that's okay so here we got this cool flame effect going up around our design that'll really pop right off a t-shirt I'm going to go ahead and get my stroke here and just kind of bring another stroke right in here right straight up through the top and let that render and then this one what I'll do is I'll go ahead and get my pick tool double click on this one I'll leave this one straight so I can just select all the nodes and delete all of those and this one I can just bring up over here I'm going to double click again and I'll just bring this right up into here there's an extra node there that's going to cause some problems I'll go ahead and delete that one and there we go and we can bring this down here right about there and we'll take this right click and order to back of page and select OK now what you want to be aware of is that you'll need to sometimes play with these now we got a complete training series on advanced t-shirts.com on secrets of brushes with Corel Draw, and I really get into how to smooth these shapes out and work with them because they're a little tricky but yet you're able to do things with them that you just can't do with static clip art and again we want to be aware of the fact that when we're working in here up in the properties bar if we want to get out of custom we've got to come down here and click back on default strokes and that will take us back to having our default installed brushes from Corel available here in our properties bar so we'll go ahead and wrap here but once again brushes great performance upgrade